in heaven. We come before you this morning. I pray in the almost manner that we know how. We come with thanksgiving on our tongues. Heard it out of our hearts, Lord. Thanking you for being so good. Oh God, you brought us all the way. All the way to where we are now. Through difficult moments, times we have gone through. Oh God, you've been right there. We thank you so much for our loved ones, our friends, enemies there be in. We ask, oh God, that you will help us here at this Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Be loving peoples to love one another. Oh God, to give the love to you. Oh God, we ask that you will strengthen us when we're weak. Build us up where we're torn down. Help us, Lord, to prosper in every way. We thank you, oh God, for this opportunity to call upon your name. Thank you for the monetary means that you have given us. Thank you for all that have to give, Lord, and those that did not, we pray for them. Oh, God, bless us now. Keep us strong. Help us to do your will. Bless our pastor and his family and his absence. Oh, God, bless us here at the Good Hope Church. We give you honor. We give you praise. We cast all our care upon you because we know you care. Keep us safe. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say
It does not matter how I get it or whom I get it from. Just as long as I'm getting it and as long as it increases my wealth, my status, or my standards, then so be it. It does not matter who I have to step on, step over, or step to. I can't be concerned with anyone else. I'm too busy to bother and too caught up to care. I, I found an interesting article in Bible.org from Pastor Stephen Cole. Now, Pastor Cole tells the story, and I quote, years ago, some researcher decided to find out if seminary students are good Samaritans. They met individually with 40 ministerial students under the pretense of doing a study of careers in the church. Each student was instructed to walk to a nearby building to deliver an impromptu talk into a tape recorder. Now, I will explain what a tape recorder is later to your Generation X and your Generation Y. I know uh, it's like the 8-track. We have to go back some years. Listen, some were told to talk on the Good Samaritan parable, while others were told to talk about their career concerns. Meanwhile, the researcher planted an actor along the path who was as a Samaritan, who was as the Samaritan approached, grown and slumped to the ground. The research found that more than half of the students walked right on by. The researcher also noted some who were planning their dissertations on Good Samaritan, literally step over the slump body as they hurried along. I need you to understand that these were seminary students. I have said this more than once. We can get so caught up that we miss the opportunity to pick up someone who is messed up. Let me say that again in case somebody's taking some notes. We can get so caught up that we miss the opportunity to pick up someone who is messed up. I'm going to preach this this morning, y'all. Seminary students. I'm talking about Christian folk just too busy or too bougie to bother. Y'all decide. I, I know I ain't talking about good hope. Uh, there are a lot of lost souls that need serving. Uh, they are not always going to be the cleanest or the kindest when they come, but that's okay because God did not say that they had to be clean, kind, or considerate to serve. God does say in Joel 2, 32, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, who is the whoever? Y'all know who I'm talking about. Do I need to spell it out for you? I'm talking about the one out of the 99 that everyone knows about, talks about, tears down and write off as good for nothing. I'm talking about the young man in Boggy Bottom or Little Haiti selling drugs. I'm talking about the older yeah, woman yeah. on the block selling love. Whoever means any and everybody but they don't know what they don't know. That is why it is serving time. There is a need for servants. Jesus in Matthew 9 37 through 38 is speaking with the disciples and he tells them that the harvest truly is plentiful. But the laborers are few. He says, therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. There is servant work to do, my brothers and sisters. No matter where I seem to go, the need seems to always be greater than the laborers. 
Jesus wanted to make a point to the disciples and in essence us that we need more laborers. We need more servants who are willing to come down from the table and serve. Come out of the house and go out into the fields. It's time to put your talents and your gifts to work for the Lord. Servant means to serve all God's people. Each individual in here is given, has been given a gift that is to be used to serve yeah, yeah, others. Yeah. What is the use of having a gift if you're not going to use it to benefit others and in essence to glorify God? Yeah. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 4, 12 and 4, there are diversities of gift, but the same spirit. Paul is saying, my brothers and sisters, that look, there is only one Holy Spirit, but we all have different spiritual gifts. And those gifts are to be used to glorify God through the use of service. We all have a purpose and a place for performance. Perform where God has gifted you to perform. Or serve where God have gifted you to serve. Amen. Here is where Paul gets specific when he says in verse 5, there are differences of ministries but the same Lord. Yes, Lord. We have over 20 plus different ministries here in Good Hope. Right. We are not short on ministries. Right. Paul is saying, look, there are many ministries but one Lord. It's okay. If, is it okay if I tabernacle here for a moment. I don't want you to miss that, the fact that there are many ministries. Everybody has not been given the same talent or the same spiritual gift. Paul is saying there are many types of services that are needed to be filled by talents and by spiritual gifts. You see, spiritual gifts, just in case uh, you missed it, is not something that we acquire on our own. It's not something that you can go out and learn. And it sure ain't something you can go out and purchase. Uh, spiritual gifts are just in case you don't know if spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. Uh, I need you to understand your talents come from God and can be found in anyone. Talents are not dependent on what you believe or whom you believe in. We see it all the time, natural talent but does not believe in God. You see, spiritual gifts are only given to those who are believers. Right. Both talents and spiritual gifts can be used to serve others and to glorify God. Paul goes on to say that there are many different gifts just as there are many different needs, but we all come under the same God with the same purpose, and that is to come down from the table, pick up our towel, Pick up our talents and spiritual gifts and serve and not be served. Amen. In verse 6, Paul clarifies it by saying this, and there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Yes. Here Paul continues to make the point saying that, look, we all have our different gifts, but there is only one God. I know it may seem redundant that Paul keeps emphasizing differences, but one God, but he does it because we church folk right, yeah. can get to the point where we think our gifts are more important than everybody else's gift. Yeah. Right. Just because my gift does not put me in the limelight or the spotlight right. does not mean that my gift is any less important than your gift's or talent. Need you to understand we all have a role to play. I don't care how good the quarterback is at throwing passes. He can be the most accurate quarterback in the league. But if he doesn't have a receiver to catch the ball, then his throws are useless. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Paul continues on in verse 7. He says that, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Well, 
Paul is saying that each member of the body has a gift and a purpose. For that gift, uh, listen, listen, I don't want you to miss it. What I just said, my brothers and sisters, especially for those who want to serve but do not feel like they have a gift to give. We all, brothers and sisters in Christ, have a gift. And your individual gift from God is not only relevant, it has been given for the benefit of the body. So when you don't use it, you are in essence keeping a part of the body from benefiting from your gift. I, I, I want to shift gears now for, for uh, uh, shift gears from gifts and talents to the servant. As I stated earlier, each individual in here has been given a gift that is not as to be used to serve. What is the use of having a gift? As I said, if you're not going to use it to benefit others, and in essence, to glorify God. But in order to use it, we must be of the right mind and the right spirit to serve. Everybody can become a servant when you think about it for a minute. If your resume is prepared correctly, you can find a job in the service industry. I'm talking about anything from McDonald's to the Holiday Inn. I, I'm talking about, listen, so to be accepted or to take on the title of servant, all one needs to do is apply. Amen. One of the questions that I ask myself is how would I screen the applications for selecting right. a servant? Right. What characteristics would I be looking for? What specific, specific traits am I seeking? Yeah. What, are, what are the specific tasks that they will need to perform, and are there any specialized qualifications that are needed? We got to be careful because everyone that wears a title servant is not necessarily serving for the right reason. I'm going to say that again, saints. We got to be careful because everybody that wears the title servant ain't necessarily serving for the right reasons. I know that's not grammatically... Uh, Correct, but that's how I said it all. All you need to do is go back to Guyana and the Guyana tragedy. Uh, everybody ain't serving for the right reasons. Uh, I, 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 listen, Jesus provides us with some specific qualifications that are needed to become a servant of Christ. You see, many people take on the title servant but are lacking the qualities and characteristics of a servant of Christ. Have any of you considered the fact, and I thought about this thing here for a minute, uh, uh, Pastor Williams and uh, Pastor Trudell, I thought about this thing. I said, uh, have any of you considered the fact that Jesus chose 12 disciples and they all had flaws? <laughs> Imagine with me for a minute that Jesus chose Judas, the betrayer, Peter, the denier, and Thomas the doubter as disciples to serve. And as I pondered the question of why would Jesus choose disciples that he knew would disappoint him, I was posed with the question of if we knew what we knew about our children and all the headaches, all the heartaches, and some pain that they caused, would we reject them? It's just a question. And then I thought about that thing. How about our parents? And I'm glad my mama's not in here. We have not always been saved. I'm sure our parents thought at times, where in the world did this child come from? But not me. See, I was the good son, Sister Turner. I'm just kidding. Now, y'all don't go ask my mama. The question comes down to the simple fact that God loves us enough to keep including us. Even during, before, during, and after, we would disappoint him. It's called the agape love, my brothers and sisters. Love without conditions. 
John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have ever lasting life. Romans 5 and 8 said, For God commanded his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It is all about love for mankind. How can we serve without first loving one another? I'm not just talking about the brothers and sisters sitting up in good hope. I'm talking about Donald Trump. Oh, I know that's going to catch some of y'all off guard. Yeah, I'm talking about the left wing and the right wing of government. I'm talking about the straight and the gay. I'm talking about the married and the shattered. I'm talking about, as Pastor Pickens say, the least, the less, and the lost. Uh, uh, note what Jesus says in Matthew 9, 13. He says, but go and learn what this means. He said, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus is sitting here among tax collectors and sinners having a meal. That's why he felt it important to say what he said. He hears the people. Y'all know how people began to talk. Oh, it ain't just on the outside of the churches. I'm sure you sitting in the pews and you heard it from the front to the back. From your left to your right. Now these are Christian folks sitting up in here talking. Uh, why is he sitting there with him or her. Uh, you know her skirt is too short. He ain't got no business sitting over there. Uh, he acting like this and acting like that. But this is what Jesus said. And I love Jesus, what he said on it. Uh, he, he said, uh, uh, listen, he's a sitting among the tax uh, payers uh, uh, and he's a sitting among those sinners. And listen, and when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, you know how they do. They go to the deacons. What pastor doing over there down under that tree with those dope smokers? Uh, 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 uh. He's always over there messing around under that tree. Uh. Why is he under that tree? Uh? Uh, and listen, this is when Jesus heard it. He said, he said this, those who are well need no physician. But those who are sick, he said, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. He said, for I did not call, come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Listen, Jesus is saying that I prefer mercy over sacrifice or rituals. I know that's messed somebody up and I prefer to allow them to be cleaned up with repentance instead of repayment. I, I'm so glad that God gave grace and mercy. I'm so glad it's free. We can sometimes get beside ourselves and uh, thumb our noses down at people who have messed up. But I ask myself this question. How hard is it to wash the feet of a sinner? I find myself in the shower asking that question, Pastor Trudell. How hard is it to wash the feet of a sinner? And then uh, while I was in the shower, God gave me this. He said, well... You squat down and you wash your own feet. So if I can wash this sinner's feet, I can show them wash another sinner's feet. I just need to tell you that I thought about that thing and asked them the question of how hard is it to wash a sinner's feet. And all I needed to do was look at myself. I wash my own feet. You wash your own feet. I just said, amen, somebody. Can't get that down on the first day. Listen. Getting back to the topic of discussion, what are the characteristics of a servant of Christ? The first thing that God looks for is our heart for him. In order to be a servant and to serve, we must have the heart of Christ. And we must have the heart of Christ and the heart in, our heart in Christ. That's a tall order, but it is what it is. That is what needed to serve. In order to be a servant, we have to have the heart to serve. Too many times we look at the outward appearance and disregard the heart. Let me say that one more time. We look at the outward, the physical attraction, which becomes a mental distraction, causing a knee-jerk 
reaction, which leads, and you know it, to dissatisfaction. Uh, let me say that again, uh, uh, because, because I don't want you to miss it. You need to take the note on this. Look, we look at the outward physical attraction. That physical attraction becomes a mental distraction. You know what I'm saying, fellas. She's fine as a fox. Got it all going on. Smelling good and looking good. That's that physical and that mental distraction. Uh, it causes that knee-jerk reaction. Mama told you she wasn't no good, but you got with her anyhow. I'm just saying. Uh, 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 oh, don't think I'm a pass by you ladies. Uh, Mama and Daddy been telling you he was no good. Uh, but you know what? You wanted to get with him anyway because he was fine and flashy. Uh, now you got with him and you can't uh, uh, stand to even call his name anymore. Uh, 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 listen, we can get so caught up with the mental distractions causes that knee-jerk reaction which leads to dissatisfaction. Listen, 1 Samuel 16 and 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at the appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I'm so glad that God looks at the heart. Aren't you glad that God looks at the heart? So many people don't wrote you off. Uh, they know your past and they know where you've been and what you've been doing. They don't want nothing to do with you. They see the dirt on the outside, but God looks at the clean heart on the inside. Aren't you glad that God can look past the dirt and look into the heart? I know it's tight, but it's right. God looks at the inner and not the outer. You got to have a heart to serve. Uh, everybody serving don't have a heart to serve. Uh, God is saying that they can be the best looking but have all the wrong intentions. All right now. They can wine and dine and be just as fine until it comes bill paying time. Yeah. Come on. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. Why is it important that our service comes from the heart? Well, I'm glad you asked. First Chronicles 28 and 9. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God your father and serve him with a loyal heart. Meaning to be all in wholeheartedly. No reservations, no hesitations, and no negotiations. Just like Nike said, just do it. We must serve God with a loyal heart. A loyal heart meaning we must be all in. We can't be halfway committed, lukewarm or cold. We got to get off the fence, get up from the table and serve him 100%. Being loyal means to be there through the thick and the thin of it. It is the loyalty that God exhibits with us, to us, and for us. Loyalty of giving up your only begotten son for a sinful and dying world. Our heart must be law and our minds must be willing. God searches the heart for those committed to serve. God also understands the intent of our thoughts. God searches the heart and the mind because such as a man thinketh, so is he. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, for as he thinks in his heart, so as he eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Sitting there eating all your chicken and your collard greens. And you sitting there, you invited them over. And you're talking about them in your mind while you're smiling at them sitting at your table. Y'all been there. They ask you to come over knowing they don't want you over there. And for all the wrong reasons why you're there dining with them. They talking about you in your mind. If God could just turn on their thoughts, audio. What you're saying, Pastor C, I'm saying don't serve with outer actions. If your inner actions are hating every minute of the service that you're doing. I'd rather for you, just like we say with tithes and offerings. I know it's going to 
get somebody home, but don't give if you're giving grudgingly. Uh, too many times you wrestling with yourself on giving. God wasn't wrestling with it when you gave, and he gave you 100%. Y'all know how it is. Put that money in there and fussing about it the whole time. Put that money in there and then want to talk about what the church doing and ain't doing. All right. All right. I'm, I'm just, let, let me move away from that topic. I'm just telling you. Say it, my brothers and sisters, if we're going to serve, then serve with the motivation and without hesitation or reservations. If we're going to serve, we got to serve with motivation and without hesitation or reservations. I'm saying as a servant, we got to be available 24-7, 365. I know that's hard for some, but aren't you glad Jesus is available. He was available 24-7, 365. I'm glad I can pick up and call on the name of Jesus at 8 a.m. in the morning. I'm glad I can call him at 2 p.m. And I'm glad I can call on him at 1 a.m. in the morning. Uh, see, he's a 24-7, 365 days of a year. God, uh, I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, if we're going to serve, then serve with motivation and without hesitation or reservations. Uh, uh, listen, can I let you in on a little secret? Just in case you thought otherwise, serving and serving is not meant to be convenient or comfortable. Uh, let me say that again, because we can get caught up, you know, uh, serving and servanthood is not mean to be, meant to be convenient or comfortable. Uh, 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 I know uh, for a lot of us, if we got to come about that house in that 90 degree temperature, uh, 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 look, or uh, if we got to come up that out of that house when it's so cold, uh, we don't want to come out, uh, we'll wait till the weather turns for the better. Uh, but uh, listen, serving is not to be meant to be convenient or comfortable. Uh, sometimes you're going to have to get uncomfortable. Uh, sometimes the environment is not always going to be hospitable. Uh, and many times uh, people will come that are hostile. But we got to be ready to serve anyhow. Sometimes my brothers and sisters, sometimes in serving there are going to be some cloudy days. Seems like the whole world is against you, but you got to keep on serving anyhow. In this sinful and dying and corrupt world, it becomes harder and harder to serve. But Jesus teaches us that we got to serve anyhow. I know some mornings uh, you may not want to get up and get out of bed because things seem so bleak, uh, I, 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 especially if you're sitting there watching Fox and CNN and in the MSNBC, makes you not even want to get up. Uh, but I'm so, so glad that uh, Jesus got up. Yeah. And that means we got to get up anyhow. Uh, 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 listen, uh, uh, we need to get up. We got to continue to be about God's business of serving. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that Jesus was about his father's business of serving. I remember the story of mama and daddy and them uh, left him and uh, looked around and figured out they forgot where they left him, so they went back to where he last was uh, uh, teaching. And uh, when they went in and they found him, Mary, his mama, all in a panic. Uh, daddy jo Joseph, his earthly father, kind of sat back, but mama Mary was in a panic. A panic. I can only imagine her... Uh, 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 putting a hand on her hips and uh, began to talk to Jesus. And, uh, but Jesus told her, you know what he told Mama Mary, uh, I don't know why you're looking for me. Uh, I I'm glad you carried me in your womb all those times. But if you know that I know that I know I'm all about my father's business. And that's the business of serving and not to be served. Uh, don't you know he said I'm about my father's business. I'm here for the purpose and that purpose is to serve and not be served. I'm the ransom.